two, one. This is Daniel Gafone for Eat Sleep Boxing Repeat in a very sunny Bournemouth beach, joined by Carl Greaves. Carl, how are you enjoying the weather down here today? Lovely settings for the way in. Yeah, I'm loving it. Unbelievable. What an occasion, what a setup. Um, and we're all set up now for a fantastic fight and a uh, big opportunity for these boys to shine live on Sky Sports. I suppose it would be an idea for me to introduce the fight as well. Chris Bowen Smith versus Isaac Chamberlain for the European and Commonwealth titles. Feels as if the cruiserweight division's not going to take shape domestically. What are your thoughts on the fight? Very, very good fight. Um, the billion is a 50 50, but I just think um, Billum Smith's um, been a bit more active, fought an higher level uh, consistently. Um, obviously, Isaac Chamberlain has had a lot of inactivity, come back with a couple of low key wins. Um, but he's a very good fight, you can't write him off. But with the own crowd behind him, and um, obviously this is all set up for Bill and Smith to, to look amazing, which I'm sure he will do, you, you've got to you've got to favour him. The word that sort of keeps coming up when I chat to people about the fight is Bill and Smith's more seasoned, you know, sort of mixed it at a higher level, particularly over the past sort of 12 to 18 months, sort of established at that European level, whereas Isaac Chamberlain, he's just sort of been bowling people over, and I think his last four fights are a cumulative six rounds, and no disrespect to the opponents, but they're sort of people, that's the result you expect. Do you think that's going to be the difference, especially down the stretch? I would have thought so, yeah. Um, it can work both ways. I mean, Chamberlain still looks fresh, still young, still hungry. And um, you know what I mean? Obviously, Billum Smith's had a lot of wear and tear, a lot of hard fights, but it can work both ways. But I still think uh, Billum Smith's got plenty in the tank and young and hungry enough to, to overcome Isaac Chamberlain. Um, but it's a great fight, it's the fights you need. And uh, like I say, look at the setup we've got for it. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, we'll hopefully see more events down the south coast soon. Uh, undercard, a lot of fighters in the sort of early stages of their careers, but a lot of exciting prospects. Who are you most looking forward to seeing in the undercard? Yeah, I mean, obviously the name that everyone on everybody's lips is Ben Whitaker. He's, uh, he's flamboyant. He's got a, a great character. He's set his whole self for him to become a superstar. But listen, he's very, very good. But I just feel like there's a massive difference between the way they're training the, the elite amateurs now and then the seasoned professionals, the way they train, is a big difference, so he's got to change his style uh, dramatically in my opinion to become a superstar in the professional ranks, um, because we all see how different, how different the style is as a professional, when you get on the chest rough and tough and, and you know what I mean, roughing them up and that, you've got to be able to deal with it. We all saw what um, David Avenition did to Josh Kelly, I mean Josh Kelly was built up to be a superstar but when the going got tough and David was on his chest constantly, he didn't know how to deal with it. So we'll see, I mean, but I hope he really does become a superstar. He's a great kid, he's on Sky Sports, he's with Boxer, so it's all set up for him to, to, to be that superstar we're expecting. You mentioned your man David Anishin, I was very intrigued to chat to you about him. Uh, sort of been probably not the last sort of 12, 18 months that you have wanted. Um, he boxed against Liam Taylor, against Oscar Metz, looked dominant in those two fights, but both fighters nowhere near David's level, I think it's fair to say. What are you hoping the sort of next 60 to 12 months brings for David? Yeah, well obviously that's not our fault. We can only fight who's put in front of him um, until obviously uh, we get that world title opportunity. We've just got to keep beating who's put in front of him for the European title. If we defend his European title next, he gets a mandatory challenger in Spain. They won the bids. We're just waiting for a date and venue. Um, it was all put out for... Pers um, the fight was ordered for... Um, for um, Ortiz, Virgil Ortiz to, to box David. We agreed it, we wanted it, uh, August the 6th, um, but unfortunately for reasons out of our hands, it hasn't happened. Um, but there's no way on earth did David duck Ortiz. We want that fight and we will get that fight uh, once he deals with McKinson, which I expect him to do so. I seen an interview with Eddie Hearn a couple of months ago where he claimed that the reason the Ortiz Jr. fight didn't happen because you've made the decision to defend the European title against Mets. Can you respond to that? It's just laughable, isn't it? This is a man that's been uh, hiding, kind of been in a cupboard away from David Avenition, you know what I mean? You just can't, you just can't write it, what Eddie says. I mean, listen, he, he knows David, he knows the stories behind it. There's no way on earth would David avoid Virgil Ortiz. We've been all over the world. We've boxed everyone that's put in front of us. Um, the reason the Virgil Ortiz fighting happened was out of our hands. But um, listen, if he's that confident, that if he thinks David is a, is a pussy, should I say, then stick your man Connor in with him and let's see who the real man is. You mentioned okay. Connor Ben, that's a fight you have been very focal in pursuing. I think it's, it's clear from interviews with Eddie that it's not a route they're particularly interested in taking. Connor now seems to be lined up for this strange fight with Eubank Jr. You know, coming between a big weight disparity. What are your thoughts on them choosing that fight as opposed to not only a fight with your, your man David, but other sort of 
high level, world level, welter weights? It's a, it's a very strange fight. I mean, Eddie's put that fight and I want to put that fight because he knows it's a massive attraction. It's going to make big, get big numbers and, and make massive money because of the dad's background. But um, they're probably looking if Connor gets beat, then. If Connor gets beat, then um, obviously he'll just come back down to all way and he'll say he got beat because he boxed a middleweight. Um, we don't know, but listen, I'm hearing that fight's a long way off signed and sealed yet. There's a lot of hurdles to, to get over before that fight actually is signed and sealed. So, so we'll see if it ever does happen. Fair, fair. Just a while I've got you, like the couple of channel things in boxing. We finally got UK broadcasters, everything sorted for Yusuke AJ2. Every man on the street seems to know exactly what Anthony Joshua needs to do. Just go in there, just rough him up, be more aggressive. But you know your boxing, you're a boxing purist. It's not that simple against dogs, Andrew Yusuk, is it? It's not. That's what he needs to do. He needs to rough him up, get on his chest and bully him and use his brute force and power, which he's got. But listen, Yusuk's a class boxer. He's unbelievable. Great skills, great footwork. footwork. I just, just don't think uh, Joshua is good enough to do that. Um, listen, I'd really that like to see Joshua win we'll this fight. It's great for Britain, British boxing, but I just don't think he's good enough to beat Usyk. Like, I think Usyk's got his number, um, but we'll see. We'll we, see. we all want to see the winner of that fight against Tyson Fury. Um, Tyson, it seems, is more interested in pursuing these sort of like novelty fights. He's called out Theora Bjornsson. Just want to get your views on that sort of whole wider subject. We're sort of seeing this influencer boxing getting a lot of traction. I mean, just for example, Buatzi Richards, great trade fight, the best fight. Couldn't even half full the O2, whereas KS fights fight in three weeks, I think it's something like 95% full after the O2. What are your thoughts on this? Is it good for the sport? Is it damaging? It's not good, really, is it? I mean, you get these fights, you've been boxing all the lives, you know what I mean? It's all they've ever known. And they can't fill stadiums, and they get these kids that's YouTube sensations and big names off social media, absolutely selling stadiums out, and everyone talking about it. It's not very good. Tyson Fury is a very, very clever man. He's earned his money. He's got his name. Um, he's beat. who's been put in front of him, and uh, he's done a fantastic job. But uh, very shrewd and very clever. Will he ever come back to fight the winner of Usyk and Joshua? I don't know. I don't know. Is it almost the fault though of promoters and boxers that the reason sort of younger people are turning into these influencer fight these sort of like let's be honest the levels the low novice level but is, is it due to the fact that we're not building our boxers properly between the promoters and the fighters themselves? Yeah, I mean obviously promoters are, are a lot to a lot to do with it. They're behind the scenes. They're the they're the ones that can dangle the carrot and put the big money in front of these and make these fights. The reason they're not doing it is probably because it's not suiting them as well. You've got to say that. I mean, the promoter's only going to put a fight on if he thinks it suits him as well and he think if it's good viewing and good for TV. Uh, if it's not good for business, they won't do it. So some of these fighters are getting blamed for fights that's not, that's not happening, but uh, a lot of the time it's not down to them. So did you catch that last bit? Mate? A lot of the time it's not down to them, it's out of their hands. They probably want to take these fights, but the promoters are too clever and too shrewd not to do it. That's what they say, they always say there's no fighter that's scared of anyone, it's the teams and that, and that's more the reason that you don't see the best fight the best in boxing. You've been in the game a long time, is that your experience? Yeah, it can be. I mean, fighters will fight anybody. Um, or they say they will, but when it comes down to it, will they? I don't know. But like I say, I think promoters have, promoters have got a lot to do with it. I mean, if a promoter really wants that fight to take that fight, he will get behind him, he will push him and he will dangle the carrot, which is the big money in front of him. So. That's my opinion on it. Well, hopefully the rise of all this novelty stuff acts as like a kick up the hours for us to start getting the big fights made. Carl, I've taken up enough of your time, mate, so I'll let you go. Thanks very much, really appreciate it.